Today on Learn TV, we're going to look at how digital audio works and how Sony audio technologies help to iron out some of the problems with formats like MP3. Hi, I'm Tuki. And I'm Tim, and today on Learn TV we're going to be looking at audio compression and how digital audio works. Thanks, Sam. So, you know, a lot of us actually have tried to put our CDs onto our MP3 players, okay? And there is quite a lot of compression that happens there. Right. Now, Sony has introduced quite a lot of high-res audio products. We're not going to cover this today, but today what we thought we'll do is just explain how digital audio works. Right, a bit of a so, primer. Yeah, so, you know, some of us have seen this on CDs. Uh, so Tim is going to explain it all to us now. <laughs> <laughs> Wish me luck. Alright, so the key thing is when you're looking at those two figures, the 16-bit and the 44.1 kilohertz, they're referring to sample rate and bit rate, which is essentially, bit rate is uh, best to think of as really the, um, the quality of, the, uh, of the, the sample, if you like, and the sample rate is how many samples there are per second. So 44.1 is 44,100 samples per second. It's 16 bits of resolution. So the easiest way to understand this is if you look at it on a piece of paper. So if we look at this and we say this is time along here, okay, so this is your, your sample rate, yep, if you like, okay, along this axis, and this is your bit rate, okay, or the sort of the resolution. If you take a typical analog wave, it looks a little bit like this, okay, cool. and you'll just have to excuse my drawing. When you try and represent that digitally, if all you have is this number of of, uh, of samples, of steps, yeah. uh, of, of steps in terms of your bit rate, and, and this number of samples, then you have to sort of draw a line that looks a little bit like this, you know, and you can see here, it's fairly hard to um, to follow it perfectly to get it accurate. I mean, you know, obviously, I'm I'm losing a, a heck of a lot of Information, detail yeah. and resolution in yep. uh, in the way that I'm doing this, right? So. That's the, um, that's the problem with sort of low bit rates and low sample rates. When you get into a higher bit rate, so if we just take the same sort of thing. Yep, so you have like smaller right? squares there. Smaller squares, so here's that, that same analog wave. Now I'm able to do it with a much greater degree of uh, fidelity here um, in order to basically much more closely follow that line um, and, and therefore produce a sort of a more realistic sounding audio. Yep. So, the thing about this is that this is a very simple way of uh, reducing the, the amount of space that audio takes up, or if you like, compressing the audio. But it impacts very heavily on sound quality. So to show you what I mean, if we just switch over to um, the yep. computer, and I'll just quickly show you. So here's two tracks um, that we've got here. So this top one here is a CD, and I'll just flip that over so we can have a listen to that. Just pause this one, and we now have a listen to the uh, the sort of compressed version of that. I mean, obviously you're losing, you're losing a heap of, of the audio fidelity in there just by reducing those steps. If you look at these two waves, you know, from this far away, they look pretty similar. The, yep. um, the obviously the compressed one looks like it's got slightly less dynamic uh, range to it. But when you start to zoom in, you'll see that same thing that I was showing mm, you before. You can right. see here on the, the higher resolution one, you've got a huge number more steps, huge number more details, which are the, the subtleties, if you like, um, that are in the audio. So. What, what this means is that uh, when you're compressing audio, just reducing the sample rate and reducing the, the, um, the bit That's rate right, yeah. uh, obviously impacts very heavily upon the sound quality. Yep. So MP3 and other compressed audio formats like AAC and um, these other formats that you come across, they try to work in a more uh, intelligent way in order to keep that, that sound fidelity while reducing the file size. And the easiest way to understand that is if we go back to our piece of paper, yep. You can see if I take this piece of paper now and I just fold it up. Oh, to make it smaller. Make to it compress it. Compress oh, it. I see. Right. So I can actually make this, what was quite a big piece of paper, actually pretty small. Yep. Okay. And the advantage I have is that when I want to listen to this 
audio track or if I want to look at this piece of paper again I can unfold it and it looks more or less the same it's not quite as good as it was because <laughs> now it's got folds and things all over <laughs> absolutely so so this is what happened when you you know you still have the the, the file but because when you compress that you know you have all those wrinkles so you, you're not gonna have the same sound quality that's right now one of the good news with like Sony's uh, product is Sony has developed quite a few sound technologies to, to make it restore some of this information. Yeah. So the best way to think about it is like this, with an eye, and that's right. <laughs> so what we have here is you know, that, that file that has been compressed, and you know, just applying you know, a bit of ironing in some ways. You can see that you know, the, the paper is getting flatter and flatter. Now, the, the important thing is that it will never ever be the same as the original, but the cool thing with those technologies like uh, DM Plus, uh, DSEE, or Clear Audio Plus, which are you know, across a whole range of Sony products, mm. uh, is that you know, those, those peaks are restored, it actually you know, recreates some of the, the information, missing information, yep. to give you a, a better sound quality, for, especially like for your MP3 songs and yeah. anything that is compressed, because you know, most of us today actually have compressed audio, yep. um, and we are gonna talk about you know, CD and high res audio a bit later, which yeah. has a lot more information. So MP3 is fairly predictable in the way that it, uh, it compresses audio, so it gets rid of sounds that supposedly we can't hear. Uh, these are higher frequencies and sounds that are sort of layered underneath others so you have a, a big rock song that ends with a cymbal crash and you yep. know guitar and the bass and all the instruments are going at the same time you can kind of cut out a few of those instruments and you still get the the impact yeah um, but it never sounds quite as good as the original CD so what we're doing um, with this is it's giving you a bit of an overview of how digital audio works um, to set you up because what we're going to do is in future episodes talk to you a little bit more about high resolution audio mm. and how that retains even more detail and gives you a more realistic, more live sounding uh, experience than you've ever experienced out of CD. So uh, exciting times for audio cool. and uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon.